three personality tests. So this is, as far as I understand, quiet is a music level. Okay, guys. Yes. Let's set up chill. This is, as far as I understand, quite a serious test. A little lower. How's that? Um, this is quite a serious test. Supposed to be very... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> We're about to find out who I am as a person. Yeah, it's a very, like, psychological thing. Yeah, I, t I turned it down a bit. I never said that, what the hell? Oh, okay. Well, then I don't know. I don't know what it is. Who said that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I meant more like it's accurate. Like, it's not... It's not something to mess around with. Like, it's a very... Yes. If you do this correctly, it's supposed to be very telling. Sent a tweet. Good shit, Waggy. These tests are... Okay, well, I don't, I don't know what it is then. We'll find out. <laughs> Everyone immediately are like, no? Do you enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people? So I'm going to be answering this one like I am when it's not Corona days. Because obviously now, I bet everyone would be like, yes, please! But we have to answer it as if it's not lockdown, right? Yes. How am I normally? Right? Or should I answer like I feel now? Because I feel like that will completely change it. Normal. You're a vibrant social event with lots of people. You have to spend time exploring yes. unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. Unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. Yeah, I do. Although exploring... I often spend times... In fact, I, would, I, I have a feeling I'm pretty high on this. I mean, I'm often thinking about ideas. Especially around my business. And like, with what I do with YouTube, Twitch. I'm, in fact, I think I'm full on agree. I'm always... I'm always going hard on that. Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Sure. In fact, I would hard agree. Yeah, would I? I mean, like, I don't even have a list. We just go. <laughs> I don't... Does that mean I'm hard agree? Because it's, like, so far here? We don't even do a list, we just, we get a hotel and that's it. It's a very rough list. You often think about what you should have taken in a conversation... Taken? What did I just say? You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after it has taken place. Yes! Long after. No. I worry, uh, you know what I do, I worry about conversations, something I find myself doing, I worry about conversations, I don't think about what I said that much, I more think about what the other person said, and what they meant by that. Yes! Does that make sense? I don't look back in conversations and think I shouldn't have said this that much, it's more that I look back and think, that person said that, does that mean they hate me? Like, I'm always looking back in conversations and thinking like, did they mean that like, does that mean that maybe I'm too loud? Like, I'll, I'll read into what people say way too hard. So... I don't think yes. about myself that much. In fact, I'm, I think I'm there. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try to solve their problem. I, I, I tend to try a little too hard, I think. 
People can rarely upset you. <laughs> I can be quiet. I can be quiet. There, yeah. I, I can be... I mean, can rarely upset you. In fact, I'm there. <laughs> what? I mean, I'm not made of stone. Um... You often rely on other- The Great Rage of 2016? You often rely on other people to be the ones to start a conversation and keep it going. Often rely. No. No, I'm always trying to keep the conversation flowing. I mean, come on, I'm uh, here on stream, man. I'm always fucking- it gets quiet and I'm like, Hey, Pata! What have you eaten recently? Like, this if you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure yes. it is your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it is your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. No. If I put my plans on hold, it's for good reason. And I figure that shit out before I at all get back to my plans. You really worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. Flashbacks to Gaming Alley? Exactly. You really worry if you made a good impression on someone you met. I don't, I mean, I don't worry. I rarely worry if I made a good someone I met. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't really worry. Sometimes perhaps I'll think about it. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. Okay, they're saying weekend as if I'm not working. It would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. No, no, I'm... No, hard disagree. You said you think about people setting conversations that they might hate you? Yeah, I did, didn't I? You rarely worried if you make a good impression on someone you met. But the oh, you know what? I read this as if it's a first impression. Is this meant to be just any conversation? I figured this was- a I was only thinking about when I meet someone for the first time. Then I don't worry. If this is like any impression, I mean, you met. This really make it, makes it sound like it's a first impression. But they're not saying first impression. But they said you met. Like, I, I'm talking about, like, if I talk to my brother, I'll think back to that. Is that really, did I make a good impression on someone I met? That's just me talking to my brother. I don't do it for first impressions. I do it for people I know. That's who I care about. For friends, I think back a lot to what they've said and wondering if, what it means and stuff. I'm going to take it as I perceive the question. You're more of a detail-oriented than a big picture person. Detail? I don't know what this means. I can't- I can't get my head around this. <laughs> Does that mean I'm- No, I mean like, what? I'm more de- How the fuck am I supposed to know what, where I am on this? Like... No, I can look at the big picture. You worry about the small things or the big picture? No clue. I don't know, man. I don't understand this question. Do you guys go around thinking, oh yeah, I love the little details of things. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know, I'm a little of both, I guess. You're very affectionate with the people you care about. Affectionate? Oh, Katie, you're the... Ah, oh, you're such a nice friend. You know, like, what a... Affectionate. But I, know I do like telling people, like, if I have, like, a good gaming session with someone, I like telling them, like, hey, I had a lot of fun today. Like, yes. I am affectionate, as in, well, affectionate, what does affectionate mean? Now I'm, now I'm unsure. I'm unsure. Affectionate. Really feeling or showing fondness. Yeah, no, I do that a lot. I, I, yes. I'm very, especially compared to a lot of my friends, I often tell them, um, like, I give them a lot of love. I'd like to think so, anyway. Yes! You have a careful and methodical approach to life. Yeah, no, I'm annoyingly methodical, I think. Um, definitely. K 
ca I'm not careful though. I'm just very like. Mm. I can be wild, but I'm not. I'm wild in a methodical sense. <laughs> You're still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. No. No. Well, what's in the past is in the past. Sammy asked me yesterday, tried to. F he spent 20 minutes trying to get me to talk about something, like bring up something cringy, and I had trouble thinking of something to talk about. Like, I don't really. I look back at fate. Yeah, no, I look back at Facebook. I'm not bothered. Like, I'm more. I mean, I. I, I thank God that was a bit cringy, but I'm not bothered, you know? At parties and similar events, you can mostly be found further away from the action. No, I like to... I like to get in on the action. But I don't mind not being the main guy in that action. If, if, if Richards got Stefan, and he's like, can you chug the bottle? I'm not like, let me chug the bottle. Instead, I'm there like, yeah. Like, I, I don't have to be the guy. So that's why I'm not a full disagree, you know? Like, it's okay, but I want to be there. I want to be there at the action. Like, you know? You often find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. You also find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. Their emotions. I'm a very emotional guy, though. I, but I don't know if it guides me. I, I've never even thought about it. Um, I'm just, I don't find it difficult, but I don't find it easy either. I'm, I'm, I don't... <sighs> Can be empathetic to emotional people? Yeah, sure. But I don't think that's what it's... It's saying relate, like... Let their emotions guide them. I'm actually a little bit, yeah. We're looking for a movie to watch. You can spend ages browsing the catalog. Yeah. Hard agree. Yes! Sometimes I'll just, I'll, I, you know, you have a mood for what you want to watch. And you spend half an hour looking for that mood. Turns out that... There is no other movie like Lord of the Rings, so you just end up watching Lord of the Rings again. You can stay calm under a lot of pressure. Yes! <laughs> wow, this is a lot of questions. When in a group of people you do when in a group of people you do not know, you have no problem jumping right into their conversation. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> When in a group of people you do not know, you have no pro- What, just hop right in? I mean, you gotta be wor- no. No, 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 no. No, I take it easy. That's such- to me, that's like a red flag, almost. That sounds really- If I was together with yes. three close friends and we're all talking, and then there's someone who we don't know that well, who's there maybe for the first time and stuff, if that person, it's not a red flag, but I would find a little like, if they just like jump in and start asking questions as if they're part of, like, I'd be a, I'd be a little like, you know? Um, just a little too forward, I think. My camera out of sync, let me know. When you sleep, your friends... Sorry, when you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. 
no. No. In your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life. Wow! Yo, wait, hold on. Does someone just full-on agree with this? Who sits here and is like, fuck yeah. In order to succeed in life, you gotta step on the little ones. Weaknesses for thugs. Like, who... Uh, in your opinion, is it sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life? No. Step on others? Well, how do you define step on others? Maybe a little bit of stepping. Well, <laughs> I mean, like, depends on what, what do you mean? Step on others is such an aggressive... If it wasn't as aggressive, I'd probably be more like... I mean, yeah, you gotta... You've gotta work with people, and sometimes maybe you'll get ahead of them. And you'll look back at it and be like, perhaps I should have been a bit more... Um... Yes. Giving with them, you know? But I wouldn't step on others. That sounds so aggressive. Or like you do what you need to, and if they aren't doing the same, it's on them. That's not what I. Uh, not, that's not what I feel. It is. It sounds like I'm using them. Take advantage of. No, no, no. As I am right now in life, I make sure that others are happy. Even if they claim they are, like, whether it's paying them or, like, if I'm working with someone, to me, getting ahead in life is work, YouTube, Twitch, and stuff like that. If someone's helping me, I make sure that they're happy with the arrangement. And, like, other friends who are streaming, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, no. I want to make sure that everyone's happy. So you used to step on people? No, I do look back, I mean, when I first started my YouTube thing, when I first started getting uh, ads on my videos, uh, there were some issues with uh, my friends. There was some stuff there where they felt they wanted to get um, paid and stuff. Early YouTube days. Um, and there, were, there was definitely, I wouldn't say I stepped on them, um, but it's still like, man, if you ask maybe one of them, maybe they'd be like, you used me, like, so. But if you're asking me now if I think it's okay to step on others to get ahead in life, then I hard disagree with that. Did they put down any work? No. No. Uh, no. No, no, no. No, we played, you know, played games. But, um, that's a whole other story. If you want, I could get into that and how I feel about it and why I chose to do things the way I did it. I, um... I'm happy to talk about it. It's been a long time, and I'm not going to name any names. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk to you about how I feel about it. Now, it's no one you know. Um, you're dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. My goals. What are my goals? Stream. I get sidetracked? No, I'm, I'm focused on what I do. I don't get sidetracked. Uh, in fact, I get too focused on what I do, so I'm just always doing stuff with work. You can't even do the cooking stream? Yeah, but that's not a goal. My goal in life isn't to do a cooking stream. I would say that I'm extremely dedicated and focused on my goals, or I wouldn't be where I am today. $100. Here we fucking go. Is there TTS? No, there's no TTS. I'm not interrupting you. First time ever watching you on a live stream. You're jerking off a blind guy. This is really cool, but I'm fu I'm finally able to donate. I really like Shrek. What? What is happening right now? And I thought that you and Alex really reminded me of the fairy godmother and the gingerbread man. <laughs> what the fuck? You guys are awesome. <laughs> Dude, I even sounded a little bit like the gingerbread man when I read that. Dude, I haven't seen that in ages. 
I, I, I did not mean to sound like the gingerbread man when I read that. I was just me laughing. So you're saying that I'm the gingerbread man and Alex is the fairy godmother. That's so funny, dude. Um, that's a really, you know what? For a first donation, you're high, man. You're high. Don't ever donate again. Your one donation is $100 and actually so funny. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the big $100. You're a beast. Um, much love to you for that. That's lovely. That's lovely. Thank you. Enjoy your stay at your first um, your first stream. Thank you to the rest of you. I'm gonna read you guys before right before we play Valheim. I'm just gonna do finish this personality test. If you make a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself, your abilities, or your knowledge. No, hard disagree. Um, no, I'm confident in my area. If I make a mistake. I'm- I'm very down with the fact that people make mistakes. It's not the end of the world. Case in point, my Minecraft speedruns. No matter how many mistakes I make in Minecraft, I never doubt myself. We keep going. Yes. And we work on it. Uh, when at a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people. And mostly talk to the ones you already know. Okay, so... No, I wouldn't say I mostly talk to people, but I wouldn't say that I go all out to talk to them. Um, I'd say I just kind of talk to them a little, you know? It's, you rarely try. I mean, I'm going to be a slow disagree on that one then. But I won't, like, go all out with them, like... For me. Maybe a little, come on out to you. What, on the making a mistake? Well, I'm trying to think of something outside of what I do, what I work with. If I make a mistake... Yes! Okay, well, actually, you know what? In the house life, perhaps take it down a little. I can doubt myself a little bit, having moved into the house. Here and there, I get a little like, uh, you know? Yes! But I get over it pretty quickly. So... And that's just a touch, you know. It's on a bad day, perhaps, you know. Now, it's right. You usually lose interest in a yes. discussion when it gets philosophical. When the hell is it? Philosophical? I wish they had an example. When, when does a discussion get philosophical? Yes. No, I mean, I won't lose interest. Why would I st- why would I- Well, we're talk- Okay, what are we talking about? We're talking about... The you- a YouTuber... Drama, who came out with the N-word. And then... Suddenly, the people I'm talking to... Start saying, What if racism... Wasn't a thing? And they get philosophical about it, they get really deep. Do I then say, Ugh... This is too philosophical for me. No, I don't. I mean, I like- I like being philosophical. No, it's fine. Uh, I disagree. I mean, it, it can get a little bit much if it goes too hard, you know? Um, I disagree. But I don't do a strong disagree. Um, I don't- ah, I'm gonna go there. I don't usually lose interest, no. Well, what's- what's- yeah, what's philosoph- that's not really philosophical, you're right. It's, uh, relating or devoted to the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge. Well, who the fuck brings... Philosophical discussion about free will. Yeah, philosophical discussion about racism. Why are we here? Yeah, nah, I'll stay into it. I feel like I'd be kind of a dick if I'm like... <sighs> and I, you know, like... <laughs> That's what they want to talk about? Oh, listen. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. <clears throat> you feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere than to mere, a more quiet and intimate ones. 
You feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere. No. No, I like a quiet and intimate one. I mean, like, if I go out with friends, we'll go to a nice little pub. I love going to an English pub. Low music, no dancing, just chill. Hate going, like, to any sort of loud... Um, dance bars and clubs and shit. Uh, I moved out here to a house. Quiet life, rather than living in the city. So, I'm not more drawn, no. In fact, I think I'm just there. You like discussing different views and theories on what the world could look like in the future. Sure. I'm not in love with it, but sure, it's fun. Uh, when it comes to making life-changing choices, you mostly listen to your heart rather than your head. Cannot imagine yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you cannot see, touch, or experience. I can't think of anything else than religion. What else can I dedicate my life to? Math? You can experience math. Oh, I guess <laughs> you can experience anything. See, touch, or experience. Math, perhaps, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I can't dedicate my life to anything like that. No, that's not for me. I wouldn't say that streaming and what I do is within that uh, realm. I'm... This is an ex This is... It's not the same. As what they mean. Um, you usually prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive. Okay, I mean, if we're talking about me, like, in a normal sense... Revenge? I don't believe in revenge. I like forgiving people. I'm very... There, there have been many moments where I feel that someone was... went too far with me or something. And I'll forgive them, rather than like... Your mother's fat! Like, I mean, like, that's... I'm not, I'm not about that. If, if we're talking about... Chat, you have to realize it's, like, if we're talking about me on stream, then, like, if I get team killed, then yeah, sure, I'm gonna look to team kill them. But that's just because we're playing games. If it's something real, then, like, if you sat down and was like, Hey, Tio, in all seriousness, what's the best thing for you to do in this situation? Then I'd say, yeah, to forgive him. Like, but it, we're having fun, and it's like, it, it, that's not what they're asking me. It's not banter. Like, this is actual, like, what do you yes. think is better? I don't believe in revenge. I don't believe in revenge. If someone insults me, um, we're out and about on the street, and someone insults me, I don't immediately think I'm gonna get revenge. Like, no, fuck you. I'll probably avoid the person. Um, and I would actually be closer to forgiving them. I'd probably be like, they're probably having a bad day, you know, <laughs> like, then, then be like, this fucking, I wish I got a fucking, you know, like, um, usually prefer to get your revenge rather than forgive. Strong disagree. You often make decisions on a whim. No. I mean, no, no, no. The time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying. Let's do that. Time you spend by yourself often ends up being more into satisfying than the time you spend with other people. Mm. I mean, uh, no. I mean, like sometimes, sometimes I uh, it's interesting with me. 
and I'm alone, sometimes I'm bored and I like being with others. I don't know, I, I have no... I don't know about that one. Casually makes a decision on a whim. <laughs> I mean, I figure they talk about like real decisions and not like, hey, where should we eat? You know? You often put special effort into... I mean, even if we talked about where should we eat, I will be like, hmm. Let's see here. Uh, you often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning or the message of a song or movie. No. Depends on what we're watching. If it's like a show where there's a lot of meaning, then yeah, I'll read into it a little. But I don't put like special effort, like. I mean, I do enjoy being with friends. But I can entertain myself. I'm very good at entertaining myself. You always know exactly what you want. We disagree then? What, this? The time you spend by yourself often ups up being more- Oh yeah, you're right. You rarely think back on the choices you made and wonder what you could have done differently. The choices I made. No, I do think back sometimes just about like... If something goes wrong, perhaps I'll think a little bit about how I could have done it a little differently. I don't... No, I, I, I think back at choices, yeah. I'm doing it in this personality test, a lot. I'll read one and I'm still thinking about something I answered two, two goes ago. Uh, ago. Um, yeah. Yes! When in a public place, you usually stick to quieter and less crowded areas. Are we not? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, like, I'm not yes. like, I need space, like, but I mean, like, um, I'll go. Tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. I don't think so, no. No, I'll, I'll think about future possibilities all the time. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. No, no, I'd like to think I'm I'm okay at someone explain I never I'm never like why does he feel that way? Like I I feel like I can When starting to work on a project you prefer to make as many decisions up front as possible. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I we, if we start a project yes. I tend to sit down and try to figure as much out as I can early days rather than say like we'll figure that out later. When you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed in you. Now this maybe coincides with what I said yes. before. I said before that I think back to conversations with people and wonder, did he mean that he hates me when he said that? Like, I'll think like, what did he mean by that? Does he find me annoying? Like. But I don't think, like... Yes! How long will it be until this person hates me? So, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm something like this. Or disappointed. You feel yes! comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation? I don't feel uncomfortable. I'd be okay if there's a reason I'm... Ah, I mean, like... I'm not gonna strike up a rat... Like, I have to have a reason to do it. I yes! can't just... If I have a reason for it, then yeah, I'm okay. But I, if you tell me, hey, go to that person and just talk, like, then I'd be shit. 
So yes. I, uh, uh, but I wouldn't be like uncomfortable. Like, I'd be okay. I'm okay talking to random people. People, someone you find interesting. Yeah, no, if I find someone interesting, yeah, yeah, uh, I feel comfortable going up to them and and talking to them for whatever reason that I find them interesting. I'm gonna go there. You often drift away into daydreaming about various ideas and scenarios. You look after yourself first, and others come in second. No. Even when you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just... end up doing what you feel like at any given time. Even when you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like. Yeah, I mean, if I change my mind, I change my mind. But, I mean, if I have some stuff I have to do, then I do it. You usually just end up doing what you feel like. No, I do, I do. Sometimes I delay stuff because I feel like doing something else. I'm, I'm gonna be here. Your mood can change very quickly. No. Sometimes, perhaps. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. I don't know it often. Maybe I'll... You often talk about your... Do I contemplate the reasons for human existence? Or the meaning of life? I mean, I'll think about it sometimes. But I often contemplate it? Yes! I was there. God, do people know this about themselves? You often talk about your own feelings and emotions. With the right person. On stream. Yeah. Yeah. If people- if you- if you ask me how I'm doing on- even on stream. And I'm not doing good, I'll talk about it. But I don't often just like- I'm so sad! Like, I mean, like, I have to... You have got detailed education or career development plans stretching several years into the future. Career development. Yes, strong agree. Well, I mean, like... Plan like, I know where I am years from now. Like, I know what I want in life and what my career... Yeah. As much as I can know, Within my field, I know. As much as I can plan, I've planned. Let's just say that. People are always asking me, do you see yourself doing this in 20 years? And I say, yeah, if uh, there's someone here to watch, then... And if I'm still enjoying it, then yeah. So I've always... I'm always feeling that I... I've got as much planned as I can. You rarely dwell on your regrets. My regrets? Didn't we already have this question? You rarely dwell on your regrets. I don't really have any regret. I mean, like, no. No. Yes, I rarely dwell on my regrets. Um, there's perhaps one or two that I sometimes, but like, a couple times a year, I'll sit down and be like, so I guess I rarely dwell on my regrets. Spending time in a dynamic atmosphere with lots of people around quickly makes you feel drained and in need of a getaway. Yes! No. You see yourself as more of a realist than a visionary. <laughs> um... Yeah, I often say I'm realistic. People say, hey, you're a bit... A bit too, um... Optimistic, Theo. And I say, no. I'm realistic. But perhaps that makes me a visionary by saying that. That sounds like something a visionary would say. Doesn't that sound like something a visionary would say? A visionary would totally say that. They'd be like, no, 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 no. I'm being perfectly realistic. Maybe I'm a bit of a visionary. I am a little bit of a visionary, I think. 
but I see myself as a realist. No, I am a visionary, actually. I'm super optimistic about everything. I can think of so many things right now that I'm overly optimistic about. And if so, I think I'm a bit of a visionary. I will tell you that I'm being a realist, but I think I'm... I think I'm a visionary. No, I'm a- I'm a visionary. I'll go here, just because I do think that a lot of my very optimistic kind of like things are realistic. <laughs> you find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Yeah. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than to organized and consistent efforts. My work style? I mean, like, I come on here and it's like... It's not... No, I mean, it's organized. It's consistent, but I also have... No, it's consistent. No, I don't, I don't have bursts. I mean, I have bursts of energy, but I still, no matter what my energy, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna stream, like. But then there's stuff like cleaning, but that's not what they're asking, same work style. I, I, no, but it's, it's closer to organizing and consistent energy. Uh, it's closer to that. So I'm actually gonna be quite close to disagreeing because while I do have spontaneous bursts of energies my day-to-day -day life is organized and consistent no but they're not talking about work area they're saying work style my area is a bit of a mess but my work style is in bursts of energy I I come on here and I do my thing my personal, but that's my, how do I work? First, some motivation to work? No, no, I'm on here day by day doing my thing. Your emotions control you more than you control them. After a long and exhausting week, a fun party is just what you need. No. After a long and exhausting week, a nice day on the couch is just what I need. I may go on a party, but it's not what I need. For me, after a nice, long, exhausting week, all I want to do is do absolutely nothing. Um, it's not what I need. Perhaps it can be fun. Nice day of just relaxing is what I need. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancement could change everyday life. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of my job. I'm always thinking about. Yeah. You always consider how your you always consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I often do stuff. I often do stuff on stream that's a bit rushed because it's on stream and it has to be rushed. And if it involves someone else, I will often look back at that and, and think, oh, I need to talk to them and make sure we're good. Like, because I kind of rushed something. Um, let's say that I'm, I want to play a game and there needs to be five of us before doing something. Uh, so is that like an effect? Mm, I, it, for me, it's while I'm doing it. So I don't know. <laughs> Did I, Cadiz? <laughs> like thinking before speaking? I do do that. I think a lot before. I mean, I do. I think I do think about this a lot. No, I do. I do. I do. I do. I think about it during as well, if I end up doing something. But even before, I will 
consider it quite a lot. You still honor the commitments you have made, even if you have a change of heart. Commitments. Sometimes. I'd like to say that more often than not, I honor a commitment, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, Q chat being like, No, where's the fucking cooking stream? Where's the... And, like, that's not because I had a change of heart. It's other reasons, okay? Where's this... Where's your fucking house tour? Like, there's more to life than house tours and cooking streams, okay? It's not because I had a change of heart. That's coming. I just... There's it's other reasons. Um, you still honor the commitments you have made, even if you have a change of heart. Uh, heart. Uh, yeah, most of the time, uh... It's a c close... It, de it completely depends, I think. Very dependent on... I mean, like, games. Is me playing through a game a commitment? You could really read into this differently, like... You rarely feel insecure. Oh, what a fucking deep last question. No, you know what? I often look for other people's opinion, both friends, family, and you guys, on a lot of things. And I use that in order to feel confident. I do rarely feel insecure, but it's with the help of others. So I guess I rarely feel insecure. Uh, yeah, I am very confident about things, but I do look for security in my thoughts and feelings through others. I can think of a few th areas where I feel a little bit insecure. But I do rarely feel insecure, so... But then I, I, yeah... Maybe that... I think that's a good area for me. Your gender. But surely then you feel insecure and then look for outside help? No, it's, it's a mix. I feel secure about stuff, but I also want to make sure that others agree. And I, I think it's also about seeing that to make sure that I'm making the right decision, I think is part of it. It's often about making sure that I'm on the right path. I don't want to make, I don't want to have, if I feel something about a decision or anything, it's not that I feel insecure about it as much. I feel confident about it, but I want to make sure at the same time, see if, like, I'm completely out about- Ah, fuck it. Here we go, baby. Wait, what is this saying? Your personality, personality type is advocate. I'm introverted in mind. What is this percent thing? Am I 51%? Am I literally in the middle? On my mind. I think this is rare. This trace shows how we direct our mental energy. Okay, I'm quite in the middle. I'm intuitive, so okay. Nature, this trait doesn't make decisions and cope with emotions. I'm 82% feeling? <laughs> really? I don't know about that one, man. 82%! How we make decisions and cope with emotions. Feeling, thought, thinking. Emotions? What, like, I'm really sad. Let's have some feeling. What? I don't get this. Like, this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision-making. Judging, prospecting. Identity. This trait underpins all others, showing yes! how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. Ford is turbulent. Okay. Uh... 
Treat people as if they were what they ought to be, and you help them to become what they are capable of being. Okay. Advocates are the rarest personality types of all. Really? Still, advocates leave their mark on the world. They have a deep sense of idealism and integrity, but they aren't idle dreamers. They take concrete steps to realize their goals and make a lasting impact. <laughs> Man. Oh, yeah, look at this. God damn. Advocates' unique combination of personality tra traits makes them complex and quite versatile. For example, advocates can speak with great passion and conviction, especially when standing up for their ideals. At other times, however, they may choose to be soft-spoken and understated, preferring to keep the peace rather than challenge others. Damn, yeah, no, I feel that way. I, I try, anyway. That's what I try to do. A mix. Advocates generally strive to do what's right. They want to help create a world where others do the right thing as well. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Almost annoyingly so. People with this personality type may feel called to use their strengths, including creativity, imagination, and sensitivity, to uplift others and spread compassion. Concepts like egalitarianism and karma can mean a great deal to advocates. Advocates may seem may see helping others as their purpose in life. They are troubled by injustice. <laughs> And they typically care more about altruism than personal gain. As a result, advocates tend to step in when they see someone facing unfairness and hardship. Mm. Many people with this personality type also aspire to fix society's deeper problems. In the hope that unfairness and hardship can become things of the past. Yes! Nothing lights up advocates like creating a solution that changes people's lives. Advocates may be reserved, but they communicate yes! in a way that is warm and sensitive. This emotional honesty and insight can make a powerful impression on the people around them. Mm. Advocates value deep and authentic relationships with others, and they tend to take great care with other people's feelings. That said, these personalities also need to prioritize reconnecting with themselves. Advocates need to take some time alone now and then to decompress, recharge, and process their thoughts and feelings. Definitely. Cost of success. <laughs> uh, I know all about this. At times, advocates may focus so intently on their ideals that they don't take care of themselves. <laughs> advocates may feel that they aren't allowed to rest until they've achieved their unique vision of success. But this mindset can lead to stress and burnout. That's me the last 30 days, dude. If this happens, people with this personality type may find themselves feeling uncharacteristically ill-tempered. Yeah. I can see that. Advocates might find themselves feeling especially stressed in the face of conflict and criticism. <laughs> dude, just the other day I yelled at a guy for calling my stream boring. <laughs> These personalities tend to act with the best of intentions. And it can frustrate them when others don't appreciate this. <laughs> At times, even constructive criticism may feel deeply personal or hurtful to advocates. This is really spot on, man. Personal mission. Many advocates feel compelled to find a mission for their lives. When they encounter inequity or unfairness, they tend to think, how can I fix this? They are well suited to support a movement to right or wrong, no matter how big or small. Advocates just need to remember that while they're busy taking care of the world, they need to take care of themselves too. Dude, there's so much summarizing me. Advocate personalities enjoy finding the perfect solution for the people they care about. To do this, they draw on their vivid imagination and their strong sense of compassion. This can make them excellent counselors and advisors. Insightful. Advocates typically strive to move past appearances and get to the heart of things. This can give them an almost uncanny ability to understand people's true motivations, feelings, and needs. Wow.
With their advocate, personality type tend to have deeply held beliefs, and their conviction often shines through what they speak or write about subjects that matter to them. Advocates can be compelling and inspiring communicators with their idealism persuading even the hardest of skeptics. Passionate. Advocates can pursue their ideals with a single-mindedness that may catch others off guard. These personalities rarely settle for good enough, and their willingness to disrupt the status quo may not please everyone. That said, advocates' passion for their chosen cause is a key aspect for their personality. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how accurate do you think this is? So far? I mean, there's some parts where I'm a little like, that's a bit extreme for me, but... So far, maybe 8. A lot of this, I feel, is close to me anyway. It's maybe- I mean, this is talking in extremes, though, you know? I always generally aim to use their strengths for the greater good. They rarely enjoy succeeding at other people's expense. They tend to think about how their actions affect others. Their goal is to behave in a way that will help the others around them and make the world a better place. There's a lot about making the world a better place. I mean, I don't- I don't go about my day doing stuff to make the world a better place. If I help someone I know, you know, like... It's not because I'm like, I'm making the world a better place. Like, I'm just doing it. Like, I don't know. You guys are really sucking up to me here, aren't you? Ah, oh, Cadis, have you seen this? Cadis, are you looking at this chat, man? It's a lovely day. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sensitive criticism. If someone challenges their principles or values, advocates may react strongly. People with this personality type can become defensive in the face of criticism. In conflict, particularly when it comes to issues that are near to their hearts. Uh, yeah. I'm very sensitive to criticism. Reluctant to open up. Advocates value honesty, but they're also private. They may find it very difficult to open up and be vulnerable about their struggles. Hmm. Dude, just the other day, Flash was telling me that I'm bottling up my emotions when we're we were talking off stream. <laughs> about, like, personal shit. This might also be because they think they need to solve their problems on their own and don't want to burden other people with their issues. That's literally what I said to Flash. Holy shit. That's really weird. We were literally having like a deep late night talk off stream. And I said that I don't like opening up with friends because I don't want to like burden them. I feel like that's a classic though. Isn't that what a lot of people say? When advocates don't ask for help, they may inadvertently hold themselves back or create distance in their relationships. Yeah, I can do that. feels a little bit like a, um, what's that thing in newspapers called? Where people read it and be like, that's literally me! Like a lot of this, isn't this what a lot of people feel about themselves? Can I ask chat? Sensitive to criticism? Yes or no, do you feel like you're sensitive to criticism? Yeah, horoscopes. Hope will say, you reading this matches me not at all. Interesting. Okay. So it's, I mean, maybe I'm feel like, I mean, like, I feel like it's matching me a lot, which is why I'm asking. It makes me a little suspicious. A lot of what they're saying is how I feel about myself. The advocate personality type is all but defined by idealism. A lot of no's, huh? While this is a wonderful quality yes. in many ways, an ideal situation is not always possible. Advocates might find it difficult to appreciate their jobs, living situations, and relationships if they're continually fixating on imperfections, wondering whether they should be looking for something better. This one I disagree with. Uh, I'm a perfectionist in a lot of my areas, but not in my job. Well, I'm a perfectionist in my job, but it doesn't lead me to not appreciating my job, if that makes sense. 
I disagree with it saying find it difficult to appreciate. I appreciate all of these, but I'm still a perfectionist. But that's because I feel very happy with these. Like, I'm always striving to make the best out of them, though. Like, but I'm, I still appreciate it. Voiding the ordinary. Eldricate would tend to be motivated by a sense of having a greater purpose in life. They might consider it tedious or unnecessary to break their big visions into small, manageable steps. I have a lot of big visions, actually. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah. They may be setting themselves up for frustration if they don't turn their dreams into everyday routines and to-do lists. Yeah. Sure. Without these specifics, their goals may never materialize. Wow. They're really... Okay. Fuck you. Prone to burnout. Advocates perfectionism and reserve may leave them with few options for letting off steam. People with this personality type can exhaust themselves if they don't find a way to balance their drive to help others with necessary self-care and rest. I know I don't have to read through all of this, guys, but I'm really curious what they have, because it's really... A lot of this is... Seek purposes of finding a romantic partner seriously. People with this personality type look for depth and meaning in their relationships, preferring not to settle for a match that's founded on anything less than true love. <laughs> Can take time for to find a compatible partner. No, but I think I got lucky. Some people might think advocates are too choosy, and it's true that these personalities can have unrealistic expectations. Sometimes it might hold out for a perfect partner relation, but ultimately doesn't exist. I kind of disagree with this on myself. Balance just with enough realism can actually enhance their love lives. Advocate personalities tend to be in touch with their core values, so they care about compatibility as well as surface level attraction. This can help them avoid matches that aren't founded on authenticity or shared principles. Once advocates do find a suitable relationship, they rarely take it for granted. Instead, they tend to look for ways to grow as individuals and strengthen their connection with their partner. This can help advocates' relationships reach a level of depth and sincerity of which many people can only dream. <laughs> Dude, this is so like, you're the fucking best. Are the other ones written like this? Because this is- this is written by a guy who thinks he's an advocate. This is such like a... God, people can only dream of being where we are. Are they all this like, you're the best, dude. You're so fucking good. Like, <laughs> are they all written like this? That's so funny. Everyone's the most awesome person in the test. I'm curious, I'd love to compare, you know, and see how they're said. It's like we're, we're, we all leave this test thinking really good of ourselves. We're like, yes. Advocate personalities gravitate towards partners who appreciate them as they are, and there's a great deal to appreciate about advocates. They're warm, caring, honest, and insightful, with an ability to see the truth that lies beneath surface appearances. People with this personality type create a depth to their relationships that can hardly be described in conventional terms. Because of their sensitivity and insight, advocates can make their partners feel heard and understood in beautiful ways. They aren't expressed, afraid to express their love, and they feel it unconditionally. Yeah, I'm pretty expressive of my love. Genuine and deep connections with the people they care about. Yeah, no, I feel that. Mm-hmm, definitely. I'm feeling this. Friendships. God, okay, I'll finish on friendships, I think. I, I think, uh... Maybe I'll read Career Pass as well. Then we should play some games. Uh, advocates have a deep desire for authenticity and sincerity in everything they do, from their daily activities to their relationships. As a result, people with this personality type rarely settle for friendships of convenience, rather than re rely on superficial interactions with the people they see every day at work or school. They generally prefer to have a closed circle of confidants. Advocates tend to light up around friends who share their passions, interests, and beliefs. Few things give these personalities more pleasure than connecting with other others over discussions about meaningful ideas and philosophies. Once advocates know they can trust someone completely, they find it incredibly fulfilling to share their innermost thoughts, ideas, and feelings with them. Yes! Mm. Yeah. I could see that. I could see a lot of that. I can get very excited about things. Just as advocates have high standards for themselves, they also have high standards for their friendships. They want to feel compatible with their friends on a deep level. In addition, advocate personalities generally want to surround themselves with people who will inspire them to grow and improve. Most advocates don't just want to have fun with their friends. They also want to learn new things, make new discoveries, and deepen their bonds. I mean, on like a lighter sense, I, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm looking to make new discoveries. I don't know. 
But I do find my friends, I mean, I need to, I, I, I do feel, I want to feel compatible with my friends on a deep level, I agree with that. But who doesn't agree with that, dude, really? Who's like, nah, I don't care, you know? This is a tall order now for me to feel that it's difficult to meet the sort of friends they're searching for. Hmm. Fortunately, the undergrads are more capable of finding the types of friends they'd love to meet. They might just have to use their intuition to do so, and they're quite understated way. Advocate personality types have a knack for seeing beyond appearance and understanding people's deeper nature. You can use this ability to move past first impressions to figure out whether someone's interests, values, and attitudes might be compatible with their own. Okay. In friendship, it's as though advocates are searching for a soulmate, someone who shares every facet of their passions and imaginations. Hmm. I'm making a lot of assumptions, um, but you're right, like, okay, yeah, there's a lot here that's nailing me. I think I just get suspicious, you guys are proving me wrong, but I get suspicious about some of this, because I'm like, who doesn't feel that way? I don't know, it just, it's surprise. some of the stuff, it, I think I'm just getting suspicious at, like, how much I'm agreeing with it. Uh, the quiet determination that can be quite charismatic and their ability to express themselves clearly and passionately can make them truly shine. At times, these traits may lead to unwanted attention and popularity for advocates who tend to be private. Am I private? Advocates may sometimes find themselves surrounded by people who want to impress them. <laughs> Paradoxically, this can make it more difficult for people with this personality type to find friends with whom they feel a connection. After all, the only way to be counted among advocates' true friends is to be authentic, honest, and real. Oh. People with advocate personalities have to make loyal and caring companions with their trademark warmth and enthusiasm to support their friends' efforts to grow and expand their lives. Mm. Advocate personalities don't require a great deal of day-to-day -day attention from their friends. For them, quality trumps quantity. Mm. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm-hmm. Advocates may end up with just a few true friendships rather than a wide circle of casual acquaintances, but as long as those friendships are built on a richness of mutual understanding, advocates wouldn't have them any other way. Hmm. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna read workplace habits, then we're gonna get into the games. Advocates yes! may have some specific needs when it comes to satisfying work environment. People with this personality type want to know that their work helps people and promotes their own personal growth. This means that their work must be in line with their values, principles, and beliefs. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, genuine, I wonder, yeah, of course. In the workplace, advocates tend to thrive when they have opportunities to express their creativity and insight. And they're especially motivated when they know that what they're doing has meaning. They also tend to do best when they can ignore workplace politics and hierarchies and simply do what matters to them. Most people with this personality type prefer not to think of themselves as above or below anyone else, no matter where they are on the job ladder. Fortunately, advocates are resourceful and creative, and they can find ways to make nearly any position work for them. Advocates value cooperation, sensitivity, and independence. As employees, they tend to gravitate toward managers who are open-minded and willing to consider their input. Mm -hmm. Advocate personalities may become frustrated when they feel unheard, so having a manager listens to them. I don't really have that these days, though. Think back to my retail days. Ideally, advocates will also find a manager whose values align with their own and who offers them encouragement and praise. That's talking about managers. People with this personality type are likely to be seen as positive, eloquent, and capable co-workers. One of their greatest strengths is their ability to identify others' motives and diffuse conflicts and tension before anyone else even senses a disturbance. Efficiency may be less of a priority for advocates than collaborating with and helping colleagues who need a boost. While this is usually a strength, there is a risk that others will take advantage of their desire to help. Mm, definitely. 
Right, here we go. As managers, advocates may dislike wielding their power. These personalities prefer to see those who work under them as equals rather than micromanage their subordinates. <laughs> advocates often prefer to empower them to think and act independently. They work hard to encourage others not to crack the whip. I mean, like, memes aside, I do agree with this. Like, if we talk about, like, Flash and Sunset, um, I try my hardest not to, like, crack the whip and be more, like... Meme, we'll talk later aside, like that kind of jokes aside. I love automation. Yeah, in my own work, in terms of like what I'm doing here with my tech. But like when when we're having a ser serious conversation, I I I'd like to I'd like to think they think they perceive that I'm treating them as equals. As I say, advocates have low standards, far from it. The sense of equality means that they expect their subordinates to live up to the standards that they set for themselves. Mm, no. And they will notice if their employees miss the mark. <laughs> Question of a fair advocate managers often take pride in identifying their subordinates' unique strengths. They make an effort to understand their employees' motivations, an effort that is helped by advocates' intuitive insights. Makes it sound like an RPG, dude. It's a skill. That said, people with this personality type can be quite stern if they catch someone behaving in a way that they consider unethical. Advocates have little tolerance for lapses in reliability or morality. When their employees' good intentions match their own, however, advocates will work tirelessly to ensure that their entire team feels valued and fulfilled. I can see that for myself, yeah. Dude, what's career paths? Oh no, I read this, didn't I? Yeah. Few personality types are as passionate and enigmatic as advocates. As someone with this personality type, you stand out for your imagination, your compassion, your integrity, and your deeply held principles. Unlike many other idealistic types, however, you are also capable of turning your ideals into plans and executing them. Face challenges too. Even the most idealistic and dedicated personality can become frustrating when it becomes too navigated. Okay. So right, you may find yourself questioning who you really are and who you're really meant to be. Hmm. Cool. This is really interesting. Are you ready to begin your journey? Then continue to the next section we'll be waiting for you. Our premium profile provides a roadmap toward a more focused and confident and successful you. Nah. Where's this famous one? Are you talking about famous? Like a parenthood. Oh, I'm not a parent yet, so we could look at that one. I am curious what they think. Generally strive to be devoted and loving toward their children at all times. So you imagine their children's futures. What advocates really look forward to is being able to interact and connect as equals. Hmm, yeah. Was it on the introduction page? Thanks. Check it. Ethical, creative, and kind. Dude, who the fuck says no to that, though? <laughs> nah, I don't want them to be kind and ethical. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa. <laughs> what the hell, dude? I don't know who Mary Kondo is. Japanese organization expert. Commencing the world to tidy up. Huh? Lady Gaga! <laughs> Nicole Kidman. Morgan Freeman. Why the fuck did they do these guys first? You know, <laughs> like... And then it's just like, okay, here we go. Jon Snow? What? How the fuck? Okay. Aragorn? What the fuck is this? Galadriel? What is this? Well, I mean, like, sure, that's great and all, but they're bringing in people from movies? 
<laughs> you need to read up on some people. What do you mean? What, you mean the fact that I didn't know who Mary Kondo is? No, I don't, I don't know who Mary Kondo is. Why does that mean I have to read up on some people? Tom Kirkman. Oh, wow. They bring in designated survivor? Wow, they really brought in a lot. Oh, Michael Schofield, prison break. Lovely. You know, I used to watch Prison Break every year. I, uh, I watched Prison Break once a year, man. Holy shit. Such a good show. If you haven't seen Prison Break, watch it. Especially the first two seasons. Oh, great. Damn, some really good people on here. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd put myself right here, next to Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, Tio. It's me and Aragorn. Beautiful. That was fun. That was a lot of fun.